So hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free GCSE and A-level maths videos. Do check it out, sickmaths.co.uk. Now this video is about upper and lower bounds. What does that mean? Well basically it's the maximum or minimum result you can get from information that's not very accurate. For example, uh, if I look at x which is measured to one decimal place, it's 5.6, but because it's not the actual number is just rounded to one decimal place it could have been a bit higher or a bit lower it could have been say 5.61 or 5.62 or even 5.59 or something like that okay in fact um, it could have been 5.64999999999 going on forever because that's the highest it could have been without rounding it up but here's the interesting part right well, if it could have been 5.6499999 going forever recurring, basically, okay, isn't that basically the same as 5.65? Because going on forever, 5.6499999 is so close to 5.65 that it basically is 5.65. And that's the opinion of the people who make the GCSE maths exam. Okay, they say basically you might as well write five, write 5.65. Okay, especially since that makes the exam easier to answer and to mark and all that kind of stuff. So basically, when we're looking at the upper and lower bounds, we're looking at the maximum, minimum the numbers can be. We basically say this, if it's rounded to one decimal place, can go up to 5.65 and down to 5.55. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you go to the next unit, half uh, up to five on the next kind of column after the column you've rounded to, uh, downwards and upwards. Anyway, and this one, two point three four five is the upper bound or maximum, and the lower bound for this is two point three three five. Yeah, because I'm going to the next column, which is a thousandths column, and I go five thousandths up from there and five thousandths down from there. Anyway, so that's the easy bit actually. In fact the rest is easy really. If I'm trying to find the maximum x plus y could be given they're both rounded, okay, uh, well I if I want to find the maximum answer to that, well I have to find the maximum of each of them and add them together. Simple as that. Which gives you 7.995. So the maximum of this was 5.65, the maximum of that is 2.345. And the same sort of trick in the reverse. Yeah, if I want to find the minimum, I have to find the minimum of each of these, which I've done there and there, added them together, and that's it. Okay. It gets more interesting when you're trying to find the maximum and minimum when you're dividing the two numbers, okay? When you're dividing uh, two numbers, to get the maximum result, you want to make sure that is maximized and that one is minimized, okay? Because the bigger number on the the bigger the number on the top the bigger the overall answer to the division and by making us dividing by a smaller number you actually get a bigger answer okay so you want to make that bigger you want to use the upper bound of this and the lower bound of this okay can you imagine dividing by a really really small number just to th consider the point imagine dividing by 0 0.00000 that's going to make a massive answer right so that's why you divide by a smaller number which I've done so I've got the maximum of this and a minimum or lower lower bound of this and got the overall the maximum or upper bound of x divided by y and I do the opposite for this one. I'm just messing around by using different division symbols. That's the division symbol by the way, yeah? The the fraction sign. Anyway, I'm just using this symbol now. Um, so the minimum of x divided by y is when you minimize this and maximize that because the bigger your the number you divide by, the smaller the overall answer, which I've just done there and I got that. An interesting point I've made here okay is how much do you round it to the answer because you could get quite a lot of decimals couldn't you to these answers how much do you round it to well um, imagine I'm 
measuring, you know, or counting the number of steps, or trying to work out the number of steps to the station, okay, and I measure the distance to the station really roughly, and I measure the length of each of my steps really accurately, so I say, oh, it's, say, one kilometer to the station, okay, instead of measuring it to me by meters, I measure it in kilometers, okay, that means I could be, like, 500 meters out, so what's the point of measuring my steps really accurately, okay, so overall I can only uh, my overall result is going to be as rough as my l most rough bit of working out which is the distance to um, the station so what I mean by that uh, to summarize is the I n when I uh, what's it called um, round my answer okay uh, I can only round it to the as round it as much as I've rounded the least accurate data so the, my least accurate data is this one 5.65 is only to two decimal places this one's to three decimal places um, so I can only round it to two decimal places the least accurate one this is more accurate isn't it because it's more decimal places so that's that really um, nothing else to say about